everyone, good evening. Uh, today we will be discussing section 4.9 in the book, which uh, talks about the reduction of a simple distributed loading. Reduction of a simple distributed loading. Now, before we go there, I want to go over what we did in uh, chapter or section 4.8. For example, just uh, an example. Assume that we have a beam here. For example, and then this beam has several loadings hmm, acting on the beam. For instance, let's assume they are acting on the y axis. Now, what we basically did here, for instance, we had we, we, we did several things. One of the things that we did was uh, summing up all these forces to get a resultant force that is acting somewhere along this beam. So we said that summation of forces uh, or uh, 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 the, the resultant of the forces, so some equals summation of forces, which and then we added them up, all of them to get our FR. Huh? That's what we did. Now, what we also did was, for instance, uh, uh, we, we got our FR, let's, let's assume it's going in that direction, uh, upwards. Hmm? And then we wanted to know the position of this resultant force uh, measured from, for instance, point O here. What we did was we used the uh, moment equation so that we said that the summation, or if we if we go, uh, if we take our convention counterclockwise is positive, uh, the resultant moment around point O is basically equal to summation of uh, the moments caused by all these forces, right? And this was our FR, resultant force. So we said that FR multiplied by X equals the summation of all these forces multi multiplied by, by their distances. So that what we did in order to find uh, uh, the distance X. You can see here that I put positive sign because our force is acting Counter, well, will cause a counterclockwise moment with positive sign. That's what we did. So in order to get all, to get our resultant, we had to sum up all these forces, just add them up. Now this kind of loading is called, for each and every one, this is called concentrated loading. Concentrated loading. Concentrated because it's basically acting at one single point across the length of the beam. Each one of them is acting at one single point. That's why we call it concentrated loading. Now, some of the people actually call it point loading. So point loading or concentrated loading, they both refer to this kind of loading. Now, sometimes we have different kinds of loading. For example, I have a beam here and over this beam we have several forces acting on it, but then in a continuous manner. So we have continuous loading acting the surface of our beam or across the length. Now, this is for example, this, this, this is something like probably like wind, uh, or probably it could be water, whatever. Uh, concentrated, uh, distributed loading. Now, this is called distributed distributed means that it is not concentrated it isn't concentrated at any at one point over the surface or several points over the surface of this beam or member or the length of this beam or member so this is called distributed now what we actually need to do or what we are trying to do is to find one hmm, one concentrated loading that is equivalent to the previous beam with the concentrated loading. So instead of doing that, I would, I would rather do it this way. So we want the same beam hmm, with one concentrated loading or point loading. I don't know where, probably because this is uh, a homogeneous kind of loading. So, the, so this one should be exactly at the center. Anyways, this is it's not uh, homogeneously distributed. So. Now, these two systems are definitely equivalent. 
So we need to find the value or the magnitude of this concentrated force. We also need to find its position, so its distance from one point, for example, reference points, for instance, point O or A, whatever you want to call it. We need to find this distance x, and we need to find the magnitude of, of the resultant force. So this is a resultant force. What we need to do is basically similar to what we did before. The only thing that we need to add is a bit more math. Why? Because here we have infinite number of loadings, infinite number of forces. I drew probably several bunch of them, but this is the we have forces everywhere over the surface of this beam. Hence, in this situation, we just need to add more math. When I say when I say more math, when I say infinite number of forces, that means we need to go into integration. But before we go there, I'll give you an example. For instance, assume that we have beam a member hmm? and over this member let's assume let's just write down our axes this is first axis here whatever this is the x-axis for instance I'll, I'll say what that axis is later so uh, let's say that our forces change in this manner so now we have a function now, this is distributed loading given usually by the letter W. W is a function of distance x. Now, this thing could be, for example, 2x. Huh? Could be, for example, 2x. Now, this is distributed loading everywhere. Now, this distance, let's assume from here to here, or this point is actually so this is zero point let's say this is for example one zero one let's say this is two meters for example now the units for this distributed loading because we're saying it's distributed so it's distributed over the length so we have force over a length that's why the units are newtons per meter or pounds per inch, whatever system you're using. So for instance, here we could say that at x equals zero, huh, we get w equals zero. And then change to at x equals two, for example, we have w equals four. So four newtons per meter, and definitely here, zero newtons per meter. So at exactly two meters, we have a distributed loading of 4 newtons per meter. Oh, we need to know how to find the resultant force, the resultant, which is the resultant of all these forces. Again, all these forces. We have infinite number of forces acting over the surface of the beam, so we cannot just add them one by one as we did before. Oh, but basically, the idea is exactly the same. So we have to sum up all these forces. How? Definitely by integration. So by integration, we, we could actually find our resultant force. Now, so this is a, the basic idea. Everything else is super simple. I'll, 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 I'll show you an example, and then we could continue. Now, assume that, for example, we have this kind of loading. So this is W, this should be W, and this should be X. Now assume our loading is changing in this way. For example, changing in this way, probably this is not zero anyways. And then we have forces acting along the surface of this, whatever, let's assume this is a beam, huh? let's assume here we have a beam whatever thing is so we have a beam here for example and then we have distributed loading acting downwards like this over the surface of the beam I'm not going to do all of them because it would be confusing somehow so we have here as well but I want to leave this empty for now now 
the beam has a length of L. Hmm? Length of L. Now, if we want to find the concentrated load, what we basically do first is choose a differential element. For example, I'm choosing a differential element here. Differential element. Small element. Now, the whole thing is x. So here, we say this distance from here. To, and, and so any distance from point 0 along the x-axis, we call it x r, not the whole L, because I'm not taking the whole L. So this small portion should be dx. Now, the height of this differential element is basically w. Is w. This is the height of our differential element. Now, w, as we discussed before, is a function of x. So now, now, our force that is acting through this portion is df. Now, df is basically equals to w of x multiplied by dx. Now, if we want to find, this is df, just acting over this very small portion. If we, need, if we need to find the resultant force over the whole length, then we need to integrate both sides. So integrate df. So this should be equal to the integration over the whole length of wx dx. Okay? Now, this integration, uh, if you solve for it, this is the resultant force. The resultant force would be this integration. And now, look, wx multiplied by dx. Wx is basically the height, and dx is the width. So width multiplied by height. This is basically area. So this small thing here, this is the area, or differential area. So this is basically, similarly, this is the integration of our differential area. But we substitute L for A. So the integration of that differential area. OK? So now, what does this mean? This means that the integration of, of, area, of, the, area, of the differential area is simply the area, right? So the resultant force now is equal to the integration. So this integration under this curve, and this is the area under the curve. So the resultant force is the area under this curve, as simple as that, okay? So we just need to, to perform simple math using integration to get our force. Now, so let's assume that we got our resultant force somewhere here. I don't know where, for instance, it's assumed, I don't know, probably here, for example. Say this is our resultant force. No? So now the whole thing definitely should be substituted by, you know, this is our beam now. Now, over the mean, now we have one single concentrated force. I don't know, acting somewhere here. This is FR. Now, what we need to do, as we discussed earlier, is find this distance, this distance from here to here. Now, this distance, which would actually tell us the position for FR. So now, this distance, we give, we call it uh, X bar, X bar. Okay, so in order to find that, we need to use the moment equation. As we said earlier, the moment equation states that, for example, if you take moment counterclockwise is positive, the resultant of moment around point O, for example, assume this is point O, equals to the summation of the moments caused all, by all the existing forces, which were these, these, these forces actually are, huh? these forces, the infinite number of forces 
uh, under this curve. Now, to find the moment caused by the resultant force, simply we go multiply the resultant force by the perpendicular distance, which is x bar. But now look, because because we are going clockwise, so the, the, the sign should be negative. So negative or minus fr multiplied by x bar. Now, equals to this uh, right-hand term. Now, the right-hand term now comes from the this uh, small uh, um, differential element that we used because we cannot just add sum them up all of them to start with so uh, we need to find the moment caused by this differential element so this is minus hmm? let's assume that this differential element is some, at, at some distance x from the uh, from point or perpendicular distance whatever so it's minus x huh? and then it's also going clockwise so this is negative that's why I'm using minus so minus x multiplied by w x dx but then careful because we are talking about resultant then we have to include here the integr integral as well because we are using all the forces under that curve so minus this integral uh, across the whole length right over L so now we need to solve for for x bar so simply x bar equals to minus and minus would cancel out this is length and integration over this length of x uh, sorry multiplied by w of x dx over fr right but but we said that fr equals to this or this actually or even wx dx so ultimately we'll end up with this equation now this equals to the integration uh, of l x wx dx over fr is the integration over the length wx dx also, we know for a fact that wx dx is a differential area. So this equals to integration now over area of x uh, multiplied by the area, differential area over int the integration over the area of dA or the area because this is also wx dx is also dA okay so this is how we find the position the position of this resultant force and this is how we find the magnitude of this resultant force I'll stop here and then later we will solve couple couple problems and examples hopefully thank you